A few months back, Apple announced its M1 system on a chip, the first Apple Silicon product that will be inside the new MacBook Air, the 13-inch MacBook Pro, and the Mac Mini. And today, I will cover the tech comparisons between the MacBook Pro with M1 chip, Asus ZenBook 14, and the new Asus Switch 5 with Intel's Tiger Lake chipset. Before I go further, if you guys are new to this channel, please do consider subscribing to Logan the Tech Guy YouTube channel. I make tech comparison video here sometimes in infographical way and in voiceover like this one. I also do tech reviews and sometimes I explore the science and engineering topics too. So yeah, hit the little red subscribe button if you haven't and help us to achieve the huge goal of achieving 100,000 subscribers mark in this YouTube channel. Thank you for that. Let's dive in. Now, like all the videos, let's start with the price standpoint. The M1 MacBook Pro starts at $1,299 and the ZenBook is available at $1,099 and you can get the Asus Swift 5 with the 11th gen Intel Core processors at $1,299. Well, this is based on Amazon price where you can find the links below. It's an affiliate link where if you purchase from it, I will get some commissions from it, which will eventually help Logan the Tag Guy YouTube channel to make better videos in the future. There also will be some promo Amazon links too, so do check it out. And to those who have actually purchased it, thank you from bottom of my heart. Now, I will start with the design for the Apple MacBook Pro powered by the M1 chip. Apple did not change the overall design and approach for the MacBook Pro. The M1 powered version replaces the old 8th generation Intel model with two USB-C ports on the left side of the deck. On the right hand side, it has the headphone jack. Otherwise, it's the same old MacBook Pro that Apple has made for the last few years. On the inside, it's the Apple Magic Keyboard with scissor keys, a touch bar with a dedicated escape key and a touch ID power button that will read your fingerprint in order to unlock the computer. Approved purchases in the Safari or open apps like one password. Below the keyboard is the Apple's large force touch trackpad. Outside of the housing is a traditional silver color with Apple logo. Looks identical to 2016 MacBook Pro, the first MacBook Pro to ship with touch bar. Inside is a 13.3 inch display with 500 nits of brightness, true tone technology and white color P3 support. Centered above the display is Apple's 720p FaceTime camera. Many including myself had hoped that Apple would update the camera but it didn't happen. But according to Apple, the M1 includes the same image signal processor ISP that's used in iPhone 12 and the webcam benefits from that. In couple of video calls I've had during my time testing, I can confirm that it indeed looked better on this camera when compared to the 2016 version of the MacBook Pro. For the Asus ZenBook 14, it's slightly thinner and lighter and it's also slightly larger which allows for a thicker chin beneath or underneath the screen. Metal pieces are still used for this entire case and the input and output has been improved this time with Thunderbolt 3 support and a full-size HDMI and USB ports. Logan the Tiger is set to inform that the 3.5mm headphone jack has been axed, marking an unexpected debut of this first ZenBook without a headphone jack. The USB ports now support Thunderbolt 3 and DisplayPort and that's what you end up using anyway if you plan to hook up with Quad HD or Ultra HD screens at 60Hz. Still, Asus went this route and it's up to you if this is a potential deal breaker or not. As for the rest of the input and output, both the USB-C slots on the left edge support Thunderbolt 3 with data, video and charging. Asus also include a full-size USB-A slot on the right although that's a slow gen 1 variant, a micro SD card reader on the right as well, and the status LED have been split between two sides. Much like all the other Asus ZenBook these days, the Asus ZenBook 14 still implements what they call as Ergo Leaf Hinge Design with a screen that raises on these small rubber feet and lifts the laptop's main body from the desk, allowing for extra airflow underneath. This might seem like a tiny detail but it's something that improves products reliability and a welcome update in my book. Asus includes a combined IR plus webcam combo at the top of the screen, flanked by the microphone, move the status LEDs out of the way to the sides, and they put a fairly grippy rubber feet on the bottom where you'll find also the speaker cards firing through those cards on the laterals. 
Now for the Asus V5 design, the design of this laptop doesn't appear to have changed from the year before. We are still talking about a magnesium chassis that now weighs exactly 1 kg. Its profile is 14.9mm which makes it one of the thinnest and lightest 14 inches out there. Thanks to the Asus engineers who have designed the device in such way, it has a structurally sound body despite its thin light nature. The display has an anti-microbial Corning Gorilla glass cover which also helps with the rigidity of the panel. And to address the difficulty of supplying the fan with air, they have risen the bottom panel thanks to the leverage system of the lid. It is also known as Ergo Lift Panel from the Asus ZenBook 14. On the left, you can get the charging plug, a HDMI connector followed by USB Type A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a USB Type C connector with Thunderbolt 4. And on the right, you will find a Kingston lock, another USB Type A 3.2 Gen 1 port and an audio jack. For the display of the MacBook Pro 13, it comes with 13.3 inch diagonal LED backlit retina display with IPS technology. It has a 2560 by 1600 native resolution at 227 pixels per inch with support for millions of colors. The laptop has a 500 nits brightness with white color P3 and True Tone technology. Meanwhile, the Asus ZenBook 14 comes with 14-inch display that is bright and clear with 4 sided nano edge display with slim bezels that create a 90% screen-to-body ratio for a more immersive viewing experience. It comes with low-powered 1W display which delivers an incredible 400 nits of brightness while maximizing the battery life. The screen resolution is 1920x1080p with 16x9 aspect ratio with anti-glass screen. For the display of the Asus V5, it had a touchscreen Full HD display with 14-inch panel and a resolution of 1920x1080p. It has a screen ratio of 16x9 with a pixel density of 157 pixels per inch and it comes with a screen that can be considered as retina when viewed from at least 55cm which is from the distance of the average human eye that can see individual pixels. The performance of the M1 MacBook Pro, if you are disappointed with the lack of new design, I understand. I personally had hoped we would have at least see a slightly different take on the MacBook Pro, which is in a different design or cellular connectivity with LTE or 5G. But after using the MacBook Pro, it's clear that Apple wanted the performance of its new M1 chip to be the star of the show. The base model of M1 MacBook Pro will come with 8GB of memory with 256GB of storage. You can bump up the memory up to 16GB with storage topping up to 2TB. Some professionals will understandably be frustrated with the memory cap at 16GB and it's unclear why the way Apple has chosen to draw the line with the M1 processor memory support. Apple is keeping the Intel MacBook Pro models around for the time being at least with the option to add more memory. A fully loaded MacBook Pro with an M1 comes with 16 gigabytes of memory and 2 terabytes of storage prices out at $2,299. Performance wise for the ZenBook 14, it comes with Intel Core i7 1065G7 processor with Intel Iris Pro graphics with 16GB of LPDDR4, 3200MHz of memory and a fast 1TB Samsung SSD. Specs wise, this is based on the same Intel iSlake hardware implemented by a multitude of other Ultra books. The processor is snappy in single core tasks and averagely is competent in multitasking especially when allowed to run at higher TDB settings. By default, this is a 15 watt platform but it can standardly run at 25 plus watts in better products. For the performance of the Asus V5, you get an integrated Iris Xe Graphics G7 as well as dedicated GeForce MX350 with 2GB of GDDR5 memory. Since Intel has provided quite a significant increase of their base clocks for Tiger Lake processors, we see that after 15 minutes of extreme workload, the Swift 5 struggles to maintain a frequency above the base one. However, it still runs pretty quickly and the temperature at the end is decent. While we still have some doubts over Intel for bringing a knife to a gunfight with their quad core CPUs compared to AMD's 8 cores, we can't neglect the fact that they have done their homework. The Core i7 1165G7 we found in this unit is probably the fastest quad core CPU on the market right now regardless of the TDP. For the keyboards, on the inside of the Apple Magic Keyboard with scissor keys, a touch bar with a dedicated escape key and a touch ID powered button that will read your fingerprint in order to unlock the computer, approve purchases in Safari and open apps like one password. Below the keyboard is Apple's large force touch trackpad. 
for the keyboards of the Asus ZenBook 14. Asus have updated the layout, stretching it across the entire chassis that translated wider set of keys in the right side, wider arrows and an extra column of function keys with dedicated home page, up page down and end button. The power button remains the top right key, while it's still stiffier than regular keys, you should still disable it in the windows settings to prevent the laptop from going sleep by mistake. The overall feedback is what makes this better than Asus has put in their previous ZenBook, which slightly increased resistance and improved accuracy over most other ultrabooks. But while remaining a quick and quiet implementation. I also noted that these keys have slightly concave shape and are completely flat which also help with the overall typing experience. They also feel nice to touch with soft rubberized surface. This keyboard is also backlit with white LEDs, three levels of intensity plus a dedicated indicator for cap locks. Some light scripts out with beneath the keycaps but the keys are overall well and uniformly lit. Down mid in the center of the chassis, Asus have implemented a spacious glass click effect with precision drivers and secondary number pad functionality the same they have also put on the expert book series in a month smooth reliability and a sturdy surface with a good gesture support and a palm rejection i have nothing to complain about this keyboard and trackpad as a side note there's no screen pad offer for this series which remains an exclusive for the zenbook 14 ux434 line as the, for biometrics there's no fingerprint sensor on zenbook ux425 you can still do get an arguably most similarly matter of signing into windows with the IR camera at the top of the screen. For Asus Swift 5 keyboards, we can see a backlit keyboard which has a rather shallow key travel but somewhat clicky with the exception of tap key which is really soft. By the way, the arrow keys are still pretty small and they are neighboring with the page up and page down keys. We can still be a little annoying on some occasions. Further down, there's a touchpad which is, has a decent gliding and a good tracking. Overall, it's an average unit for a Windows based laptop. There's a fingerprint reader which works very quickly and reliably. For the battery of Asus ZenBook 14, it comes with 67 watt of battery inside, which is larger than what you do normally expect on a 14 inch notebook. Corroborated with the efficient Intel hardware implementation and screen, this notebook should last for a fair while on a charge. Asus mentioned up to 16 hours of usage with standard full HD panel and up to 22 hours of usage with one watt panel. For the Asus Swift 5, it comes with 56 watt hour battery capacity and with turning on with the Windows better performance on and a screen brightness of adjusted of 120 nits and all other programs turned off except for the program where we are testing this notebook with, the laptop delivers up to 20 hours of web browsing and 13 hours 53 minutes of video playback. Wi-Fi and Bluetooth of the M1 MacBook Pro come with Wi-Fi 6, the newest Wi-Fi protocol that's faster and more efficient than the prior generation. It also comes with Bluetooth 5.0 support, while the ZenBook 14 comes with wireless zone activity, which is the Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5 on board. For the Switch 5, it settles with Wi-Fi LAN standard 802.11a, which is known as Wi-Fi 5 and also Bluetooth standard 5.0. Before we go to the pros, cons and verdicts of this laptop, if you like what you're watching and if you want to see more tech comparison video from Logan the Tech Guy YouTube channel, then a sub will be massively appreciated. Now for the pros of Apple's MacBook Pro, it comes with the faster CPU which in the form of M1 chipset which gives it a longer battery life. It comes with secure lock with better thermal cooling, it comes with the great speakers and display, it comes with touch bar and touch ID which works perfectly and it comes with the magic keyboard which is so lovely to type in. For the pros of the Asus ZenBook 14, it is the lightest weight laptop with premium specs. It comes with matte IPS screen with good amounts of input and great for multitasking. It has no fan noise in heavy usage. It comes with 67 watt hour battery and a good battery life. It decently priced with the specs. For the Asus Swift 5 Pros, it comes with both Intel and NVIDIA GeForce MX350. It has a thin and light form factor with great battery life and a dual heat pipe for good thermal cooling effect. For the verdict of the M1 notebook, the average consumer who walks in an Apple store or Best Buy buys a MacBook Pro and goes home to set it up.
will likely never realize that Apple has completely transitioned away from Intel to Apple Silicon. And that's the right way to go about this. It shouldn't matter to the end user what's inside the computer. The only thing should matter is the performance, battery life and the app work. And if this really comes down to those three things, then Apple has really nailed the first M1 Max chipset. For the Asus ZenBook 14, the battery testing with Windows better performance setting turn on, screen brightness adjusted to 120 needs gives it a good battery life laptop which is suitable for students out there while for the asus Swift 5 every time we get a thin and light device we are exposing the same weakness over and over they include thermal high cooling weak chases and more than ever incapable hardware however the case with today's hero is different the magnetism alloy of this machine is not only thin and light but it's also structurally sound also the laptop features one of the best cpu and gpu combos you can get to see out there especially now the cyclic cpu of intel have hit the markets so that's literally it guys about the apple m1 macbook pro versus the asus zenbook 14 and the asus Swift 5 which one will you go for if you have the budget you can go for the macbook pro if you are in the middle you can go for the zenbook or the asus Swift 5 it downs to your preference each of the laptop works perfectly in their own let me know in the comments below and if you did find this video helpful and if you want to see more from me then hit on the subscribe button and tap on the bell icon it is always really appreciated and check on my other laptop comparison video i will catch you next time right here we are still in the middle of a global pandemic so take care stay safe happy new year and hit the subscribe button right now all love and peace out